are you serious? I'm like, this is a really bad time. <laughs> It's the best piece of hardware I ever bought. I I've been saying that nonstop. Like, Ew. please don't bend me over a barrel. <laughs> please don't be Blizzard. Please don't be Blizzard. Yeah. My little Switch Lite that just never sees action, especially now that I got a Steam Deck. Like that thing is collecting serious dust. <laughs> Oh, there. There. oh, holy shit. Look at like all this. Counter and everything. Yeah. Oh, Craig, you, uh, you, you've, you've, you, you've uh, made some improvements while I was away. <laughs> he sobered up. <laughs> he really did. Good for you, Craig. Good for you. Wow. Uh, <laughs> hello, everybody, and welcome to the Retro Rents Retro Gaming Podcast. Welcome back, I should say. Yes. Uh, it is episode 90, and believe it or not, yes, I am Al. And I'm Nick. Wow. <laughs> it has been <laughs> about three months, I think, since we recorded last. Or at least kind of getting close to that number. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's it's been crazy. <laughs> it was the start uh, of the summer, basically. <laughs> it was, yeah. And like, it, uh, like the girls, you know, were that just went back to school this week. So, yeah, it's probably been about that long, but... um. But yeah, it's been a little crazy, you know, after my mom passed away, might have mentioned it on the, the one episode, but my dad hurt his back, um, like in a, his office chair, he was like tying a, or putting a slipper on or tying a shoe and it flipped down and just went out from under him and, uh, he fractured his tailbone. And then as part of that, um, he had, you know, he'd been favoring the injury, hadn't walked around much and he actually lost a lot of strength in his legs. And, um, it was like a Saturday night or a friday night he uh fell and didn't have the strength in his legs to get himself back up and like you know my dad like he was uh, oh, yeah. he's a pretty strong guy and i think we hadn't realized you know how much that injury really set him back uh so he wound up getting to the hospital they ran all kinds of tests uh turned and then they said you know basically his legs had atrophied because he hadn't used them as much mm. Um, they had him scheduled for physical therapy for a month long program at a place that's like minutes away from my house. It was really close. I was pretty jazzed about that, but he'd be there. He'd be there for the month and about three or four days into his hospital stay, he aspirated in his sleep as whatever he had had for dinner, some of his dinner. And so it went into his lungs mm. and he got this like pneumonia that you usually get from that. And I had, they hadn't told me, you know, it happened overnight and I'd been calling him, you know, throughout the morning and he wasn't picking up his cell phone. I'm like, what the fuck? And this is the day before my wedding. <laughs> um, like we already knew like he wasn't going to make it to the wedding and we were kind of bummed, but like I'm telling my wife, you know, I was like, I can't get a hold of him. She's like, why don't you go down and just, you know, see if he could check on him. Cause I had asked the nurse at the station, like, could somebody check on him and call me? Uh, mm -hmm. Nobody was getting back to me, so I drove down. <clears throat> I get in the room, and he's just sitting up in his chair. His TV's off, and I'm like, "Hey, you know, I've been trying to call you," and he's just staring off into the distance. And I'm like, "You know, Dad," and he's just like, "Hey," like he he was barely acknowledging anything. So I, you know, I'm thinking, "Holy shit, is he having a stroke?" So I mm. ran out of the room, ran to the nurses' station. Was like, can somebody check on him? Like, this isn't normal. And as they're checking him, you know, and he wasn't very responsive. Like, he knew his name, but that was about it. And then the doctor comes in, and he goes, I, he goes, I was just about to call you. I was like, that would have been helpful. Um, but he was like, he explained the whole thing with the aspiration. Uh, he's like, we got... He is, and he said to the nurses, like, did he take his, uh, his uh, medicine this morning? And I'm like, he doesn't even know where he is right now. He's like, yeah, he's like, I told him to, to get him, uh, you know, Tylenol in his IV or whatever it was. And they check him. He's got 103.5 fever um, from the pneumonia and the aspiration, which was why, part of why, like, he was so out of it. And that actually had resulted in encephalopathy, like his brain had swelled. It was a whole fucking thing. Mm. 
<laughs> but they got him medicine, and like the next day, now they had him on IV. My phone rings, and it's him. He's like, "Hey, what's going on?" I'm like, "You fucking scare me like that again, I'll kill you." <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, it took him a little while to recover from the brain swell. That was like a week long thing where he'd have like foggy moments, and then he'd or he'd be fine. Mm. Um. So anyway, that happens. Uh, we had a really nice wedding <laughs> the day after. Nothing major, just a very small thing at our house in our yard. Um, and, you know, had Amber's parents. Um, and, like, at, at that point, you know, I had nobody <laughs> nobody to, to really show up on such short notice. Just because, it, you know, with Dad and everything, I'd been so uh, caught up with that. But um, Luke and Becky wound up popping up. Uh, like, Luke popped in. As we're like racing to get the ready for the wedding, because the mayor of Stroudsburg was officiating for us. Oh, wow! Yeah, it was cool. And like, Luke shows up at the front door. He's like, "Hey, man, I'm just you know in the neighborhood. I thought I'd pop by." I'm like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, "This is a really bad time." <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out Amber had called and like set the whole thing up so that him and Becky could at least be here to like send me down the aisle. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just so crazy, but yeah, so we got married. It was wonderful. Um, and dad has, you know, he's gone through physical therapy. He had one more hospital and, and therapy stay after he finished the first one. He just wasn't quite there yet. Um, but he came back. We got back from our Cape May vacation last, uh, Saturday. Uh, he came home that Saturday and he's actually doing pretty well. Like this was the first time I had seen him out on his four wheeler. You know, because he always comes zipping up and down the road. Um, this is the first time I've seen him all summer doing that, like in the past four four months at least. So things are finally <laughs> getting back to <laughs> some kind of normal, mm-hmm. um, which is uh, ma- the main reason I haven't been here, because I've just been running back and forth to the nursing home and the physical therapy facility, getting him what he needs. You know, now he's back home. Um, and my uncle Mike's there with him, so he's he's doing okay. But it's like we, as a household, can now like actually breathe a little bit and have some right. sort of stability. Um, and that's that's why like we haven't recorded in forever. I just I had been so exhausted and just run down um, between you know stuff with dad and then the kids, you know, just summer doing summer things. But um, but yeah, like. Finally, I can I can breathe. It's good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> How you been? Doing good. <laughs> Not nearly as uh, exciting as, as as what you've had going on. Oh shit, man. Oof. <laughs> oh. So how, how was your summer? What you like do anything cool? No, I just you know, having to, uh, you know, haven't found any good places to go you know everything's still kind of you know obviously still coming out of i think you know the, the pandemic yeah, yeah. And get restarted so nothing really happened in that way yeah you know, just you know enjoying the gaming and uh oh, you yeah. know do a little bit of hiking here and there oh nice that's cool yeah yeah it's uh yeah it's been a great gaming summer for me i will say that mm. uh as i'm sure everybody remembers uh i got my steam deck back in may now, since we recorded last, I believe you got one, too. Indeed, I have. <laughs> so, well, this this I've already, like, preempted this is going to be the Steam Deck <laughs> episode. What do or you Steam think? Decking. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of it? Oh, it's fantastic. Like, it, it's yeah. a great little piece of hardware. Uh, I've been, like, you know, kind of pouring through Reddit posts and whatnot on you know i haven't done anything with it yet but like you know people are putting like windows on it oh, or, dude, you know, they're going crazy like, with the damn like, thing yeah all sorts of things and it's like you know power beyond just you know having steam on obviously if, if you go like you know the multi os route and whatnot you know obviously that's a little more complicated you, you know you, you got to really get, you're getting into territory of like you you either have to know what you're doing you or know very, you're very, doing. very sure that you have all the steps down mm. if you're you're researching it but but again it goes to like i, I think the the versatility that they've actually given this thing and it's so wild it is a hardy piece of hardware that's that's what impresses me most like it is a beast it runs really really well i've thrown some some heavy hitters at it, and it barely breaks a sweat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's uh, it really impresses me. the The load times are great. I wound up picking up the five twelve model. Um, yeah, same here. 
Uh, dude, it's like you just have to. Like, if you're gonna do it, let's you know, just just go yeah, all in. Yeah, that, that was my thought. It's like it's like most you know games are one games are getting bigger and bigger these oh days. Oh my god! <laughs> so it's just like go for the max one, and uh, you know, I think it also came with like uh, the, as a uh, dry or I said the onboard as a micro is, yeah is N- NVMe yeah yeah. Uh, so you also have the obviously you have that speed, but you can also expand it through like you said the the micro SD. Yep, and uh from what i you know what i've kind of you know experimented with although you know again i i i'm still very religious about like shutting it down and then ejecting oh, the thing <laughs> but apparently you can hot swap it but it also oh, get allows the hell you, out yeah apparently you can do that <laughs> uh but you know do that at your own risk you know uh-huh. <laughs> um but you know, it's like what you, I mean. The thing is, you don't need to have everything installed. Like you know, uh, you know, yeah. people were saying it's like, yeah, you can you know have like five games on this. You know, your little one, you know, SD card one, and then you can just pop it out, pop in yep. your second one, and then you'll be your other set of games. So you could literally travel around with an entire, you know, your entire Steam library. <laughs> yeah, like it used in, to be like a binder cards. of Game Boy games is a binder of micro yeah, SDs. I know, I know right? <laughs> now, now, granted, you know, it's like you know, are you gonna play them all? So you know, the question becomes like, do you need that many SD cards? No, like I. I like I got, uh, I think it was a terabyte uh, SD card. I think it was. Um, it was on sale, you know, on Amazon Day, no less. <laughs> yeah, I, I might pick one up. I still haven't picked up a micro SD card. I haven't really needed it, mm-hmm. um, but I think I am going to get one soon. Uh, I'm currently at about ninety games installed. Oh wow! <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of these, like you know, a lot of the classic shit that I played, you know, it was all really small stuff. Mm, no, true, true, true. Um. But yeah, I've. Uh, oh, I'm just. I'm sorry. I'm looking at your list. Mm. Rome Expeditions. How great is that? Oh, I man. enjoy that game. Uh, like that is a fa- like. I didn't know what to make of it. Like you know, I I, I looked saw it on Game Pass and was like, oh okay, this you know. And I think I did I did a quick YouTube video search of like what is this game? You know, what, it's what, great. what can I expect? And and it looked like oh okay, it looks kind of like XCOM. And yeah, the the gameplay or you know, the combat is just or. Uh, yeah, combat system is very XCOM. Yep, fan t- and like, and, and it's great how it kind of like changes things up, things up a Hi, bit. Hey, baby, Your daughter's grabbing a blanket. <laughs> oh, nice. And uh, <laughs> but then, but then it has like a ton of like RPG aspects. You know, plays. You yeah. know, the dialogue plays like a Mass Effect, where you have like dialogue choices depending on what kind of uh, you know background <laughs> you had for your, uh. your your Roman. It'll determine what kind of uh, you know. Um, uh, dialogue options are available yep. to you. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I am loving the hell out. And, and, and it's so crazily layered. Like I didn't expect it's, it to be as kind of deep in, in terms of aspect that, that allows yeah. for like the, you know, the whole, like, you know, eventually, you know, you, you know, once you're off tutorial Island, that is the, you got to get past <laughs> tutorial Island. Uh, yeah. once, once you're past there, you have like command of an entire Legion and then yep. they're doing, they're doing their like battle formations and things like that. Now my only gripe is you don't get to see it per se. Yeah, other, that's... Other, other than like little things moving on, on like a, a, yeah. a battlefield map. Um, but like, that's my only small gripe is like, yep. even if it was a cutscene, you know, it's like, you know, give me something. Yeah, no, I'm I'm 100% with you there. That's the only negative ding I have in the game, is that I wish you saw a little bit more uh, during those sequences. Mm-hmm. It's still a fun little card game. Oh. Um, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like, yeah, selecting the choices, like, you know, it's like, you know, do you, do you hold the line, do you Tetsudo, do you do this, that, and the other, and there's, you know, outcomes of, like, you know, uh, you know, set your army up for maybe the next round yep. or morale drop, or you'll take more of them with this, ter- you know, maneuver. So yeah, like it's, there's still a bit of strategy going on. It's just, you know, it's, very, I'd say it's, it's probably the most dry part of the game. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it's still fun. It's still fun. Yeah. It's very good. Like the story is really neat. Um, your character, like, I guess, I mean, it's a mild spoiler alert, like fast forward two minutes or something, if you don't want to hear it, but it happens like right in the beginning <laughs> of the game. Uh, Julius Caesar joined you as like a young, younger guy, like younger yes. kid. Yeah. And, uh, he winds up dying and <laughs> it's like, <"Shut!" laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And like, I started like, is there a way to save him? Like, this doesn't seem like this is a good thing. And one of the developers actually responded to the post and they're like, no, we set it up that way because you're basically going to be taking his place, mm, you know, as general, okay. like with his his exploits, you're going to forge your own. So, <clears throat> I'm, I think I have, I'm on the last, the last battle of that first uh, realm there, of Asia Minor. Okay. Um, 
That battle's a fucking cunt. I'm really <laughs> annoyed at that battle. I will get it, but I'm annoyed at it. Yeah, I think uh, I, th- I must be right behind you because I think I think I've conquered almost all of. Uh, and I love the pronunciations because you know, like, I don't know if it, you know. I'm curious if it's actually historically accurate pronunciations or, mm-hmm. or just or whatever. It feels like. that way. But the Asia Minor. <laughs> Asia Minor. Yeah, it feels that way. Um, yeah, it does. Uh, but yeah, it's it's their attention to detail is really cool. Um, it, it's just very interesting. They've released a couple free updates for it and everything, and like free DLC. The whole Gladiator thing I thought was pretty neat. Um, yeah, it's a solid game, man. It came out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, like yeah, like I'd never heard about it until it hit the the Game Pass list. And I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. You know, it's gonna, yeah. you know, we haven't seen a good Rome style game and you know since i think you know total war, total war. Right? yeah yeah and it was like oh let me let me check it's like it's like it's a mix of everything that i enjoy you know the xcom yeah. the rpg and I, I was like pleasantly surprised through the whole thing it's got you know really good voice acting yeah um, very impressive production values for an indie yeah. studio yeah absolutely so it, it's yeah. like I'm, I'm kind of i'm eager to see where the story goes <laughs> oh me too yeah I'm, I'm excited to see like what happens after ozzy aminor <laughs> yeah um, exactly it's like are, I, are we gonna get a new map or like oh yeah know, oh yeah talk this the is, world this is just the beginning from what i understand <laughs> oh nice oh yeah there's <laughs> there's a lot more um, it's a, it's supposedly really long, like 60, really? 70 hour game. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. I was a little, I was a little worried. Cause like, it's like when you, when you rotate around the map, it's like, this map isn't very big. No, this I'm is, like, this is are, just are, are, the first bit. <laughs> okay. And my, my thought was like, are they going to pull like an Elden ring where it's like, I get to a new zone. So the map gets bigger, you know? <laughs> yeah. Not, not a hundred percent sure, but I, I know there is a lot more to the game. Um, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, like, the die has been cast, so to speak. Like, there's that whole thing. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, if you like that, actually, you should check out their previous game, which is uh, Expeditions Vikings. Oh, uh, okay, so this is not their, their first foray. No, this isn't their ah. first foray. It's a very similar game with the Viking Age setting. Um, uh, I'll, yeah, absolutely, I'll check it out. Because, yeah, if it's, if it's more of the kind of like the same vibe and, yep. and set up, absolutely. Yeah, similar deal. Um, I think you'll enjoy it uh, after you play this. Obviously, remember now, that's probably a three- or four-year-old game, uh, maybe more. Sure. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But it's pretty solid. Their first one they did, they actually did one more before that. Um, I only played a little bit because it was brutally fucking difficult. And that was uh, Expedition's Conquistador. I kind of want to... Excuse me. I kind of want to go back and give it a look. Just because I do enjoy these games that they make, but that one frustrated me pretty early on. So it's like maybe follow a walkthrough or something. But uh, yeah, no, it's a, it was a really nice surprise, man. And I was playing it on the Steam Deck. It played pretty well. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, I don't know if you've realized it. Like, take the supported with a grain of salt, or the unsupported. Um, when it says a game's not supported for the Steam Deck, the only time that I've actually run into a game just being outright not playable is if it uses a easy anti-cheat or something like that. Okay. Um, they're still working on that, but yeah, for some reason with that Linux OS, it just doesn't jive. Mm. Um, there might be workarounds for it, but like you, I haven't really fucked around with that kind of thing. Like I'm just enjoying it out of the box, so to speak. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've played, oh, I, sh- I fucking left it out in the living room. I was going to go through like the <laughs> list. There's so many, like so many games are so like, it's weird. Like I've played more PC gaming than I have in ages just because like I could sit on the couch you and the couch just or take it with you or wherever. Yeah. Yeah. We, like we took it on vacation when we went to Cape May and, nice. uh, you know, it was great. Like there were, there was a day where like. I had just been beached out, like I was tired. You know, I just didn't want to go to the beach. Uh, we were staying in this house that had a pool, um, and I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like swimming that day. The girls wanted to go to the beach, so they all went to the beach. And I was like, you know, fuck it, me and my father-in-law just hung out at the house, and I put my feet up on the freaking couch, you know, cracked open a, a Cape May brewing beer and sat on my Steam Deck all day, and it was glorious. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's. I'm really enjoying it, like especially for uh, the JRPGs I have in my backlog. I've been mm, playing yep. uh, lots of those. Like, um, 
Stone Shard, I've been kind of playing along with Coat Carnage. Um, that's a neat, kind of difficult, but neat RPG. Um, I've been playing Trails in the Sky, second chapter. And um, I was trying to think. I, just a bunch of stuff. Elden Ring run, runs great on it. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I was futzing around with that. But, uh, oh, and Tribes of Midgard. I installed that finally. Uh, I'll have to play that with you one time. Oh yeah, yeah. They just released uh, their season three, which oh, wow. is uh, adds a suitor, which so, so it's a big old fire zone has been oh, added. Oh nice! So that's pretty wild. Uh, but yeah, it actually, yeah, again, plays pretty like it warns you like text may be small. It's like yeah, it's small, but oh, yeah. well, it's, you don't need to read anything on on the thing. You just need to be able to see. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it actually actually works uh, pretty well there. Um, and I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm kind of doing more RPGs on it. I'll, I'll be, you know, I could maybe use it for, you know, I say hardier, but, uh, you know, it's like, you know, I guess faster pace, but I, I kind of like, you know, again, like, you know, it's a good chill on, machine. If I, yeah. If I'm on the couch or just laying in bed or something and relaxing, it's like, yeah, it's, it's more, I'd rather be playing a relaxing game as opposed to something, you know, very intense that, you know, I'd rather play on PC anyway. Yeah, um, I've I've been playing the slap happy fuck out of No Man's Sky. Oh, nice! Uh, on they, the Steam they, they recently deck. released a new update. For huge that too, update! It? Huge it's update! It's a ship update, isn't it? <laughs> or ship yeah. revamp, I should say. The freighter revamp. It's yeah. awesome, dude. It is awesome. Like if you have not played that in a while, it's a must. I uh, nice. I went through. My God, it, it took like four days of almost four days of real time, but I finally got my living ship. Like hatch the void Ooh. egg. And I now, in my main game, I have a living ship. I started the expedition, but I think I just missed the last day of it, actually. Uh, trying to, like, they've been doing these expeditions now with uh, freighters, which is like a new game type, where you're primarily on your capital ship. And, like, you have to go to certain places, do certain things. You can warp speed in your capital ship. And, like, I, I never got to the expedition, but apparently there was really cool stuff if you completed it. But, mm. um... It's absolutely worth, absolutely worth picking up again. Like, they added so much stuff. It's almost ridiculous, like, what's in that game now. It's just ridiculous. Uh, and it's still, all, obviously, all the updates are free, which yeah. is just yeah. mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, they, they, they have been just chugging along. Yeah, I and mean, if I haven't played since, I want to say it was, like, a year and a half ago, and it just, it blew my mind how much more they added to this game. It's like, what the hell else can they do? And, <laughs> right. And I was laughing. I was talking to a friend of mine and I think I mentioned it to you too. Like, it's like at this point, like star citizens in trouble, man. Cause like everything they're promising, this game already does. <laughs> um, <clears throat> like I found my first derelict freighter. That was super cool. And like, you get out of your ship and you start walking around like very alien feeling, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. lights are out, certain powers gone. So like, there'll be like a little gravity in one part of the ship or there'll be like absolutely freezing space cold temperatures and you kind of have to move from like heater to heater. It's wild. It is just wild. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, that's mainly what I've been playing. Like I just... I like you know I just talked to Luke today. He was saying, uh, I guess his email come in came in to make the purchase, and he's like, "Should I get it?" I'm like, "Absolutely, oh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah." <laughs> yes. Like jump on it. That's like, like like as long as, as long as you got the cash for it, it's like uh, you know, jump on it. And yeah. it, it may not be what it was like. Oh, he's like you may not play with it a lot immediately. But it, it'll be, you know, at the very it will least, pull you in. Yeah, it'll pull you in at the very least. Like you, know, you go on like vacation or yeah, again, like it, yeah, I, I, I think it's more, more a case of if you mostly do PC and have, you know, a good steam yeah. library, then yes, it's absolutely worth it. Because again, you, you can t- take it to the couch. You can, you know, kind of relax if you are more console based or uh, already have like a switch or something, then it, you know, then at that point, it's like, okay, maybe not. Maybe, you know, because most of your games are probably there. You already have kind of like this, this mobile yeah, game. I'd, ar- I'd argue against the Switch if you have a decent PC library. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have the, you know, decent PC library. If you don't have that, then, then yeah, it's going to sit there and collect us. Although, uh, shoe on the other foot, though, like, if you don't have a gaming PC and you wanted to get into PC gaming, True. like, this to me is like the console entry, like in a sense. Like this is the best way 
if you don't want to worry about building a machine or you don't know how to build a machine mm -hmm. and you just want to dive into actually playing some PC games that you've heard about, this is absolutely the ticket if you can afford it. Yep. it there's no setup. It is very, very easy to use, pick up and use. Um, it's, it, it is perfect for that person. Like, you have the money, you don't necessarily want to drop a grand on a gaming machine, and... You know, there's like three computer games coming out that you really want to play. Get it, because that three will turn into thirty real quick when the humble bundles start <laughs> dropping. Right. Um, yeah. No, it's it's a it's a solid solid machine. It's the best piece of hardware I ever bought. I, I've been saying that nonstop. Like, I have probably gotten in over a hundred hours in, and then uh, another eleven hours this week because I have this week off because the girls were going back to school, so I've been out of work, like off of work, I should say, for two weeks. And uh, Guild Wars Two just dropped on Steam. Ah, and I haven't played it since like Paige was born, so we're going on mm. eight years. Um, so I wound up buying the like the expansions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Got it on Steam, and I started over because like, I wouldn't even know where the hell I left off anyway. <laughs> And, um, holy shit, like, this game runs beautifully on the deck. Mm -hmm. It looks awesome, it plays super smooth, um, and I downloaded, like, the most popular community control layout, mm -hmm. and it's, like, it's perfect. It, nice. You can sit and play Guild Wars 2 handheld and have a lot of fun. I was really enjoying that. So I've got about eleven hours into that this week, and I'm like, as soon as as soon as we're done, I'm going back to playing it. Like I'm, I'm totally hooked on it again. Totally hooked on it again. Good game. But yeah, wow, that's what uh, we've been. What else have you been playing? Anything else that's been really standing out for you? Uh, so uh, Warhammer Three just released. Oh yes, uh, it's Immortal Empires free DLC. Oh, absolutely mega huge map. <laughs> oh my god, absolutely bonkers. Um, if you ha already own Warhammer One and Two, it feeds into it. So yep. all the stuff you bought, all the factions and whatnot, will be available in Three if you bought One and Two because it'll tie together. Um, uh, I think a thing of note: it obviously Warhammer Three is free on Game Pass, but I think only two is available on game Pass. like basically yeah one or the other is not available on game pass currently so it, it, you know if you really want to go that route on game pass you're gonna be you're gonna be missing out on some factions uh, yeah I, I know steam has it all available i'm not sure about epic or you know the in the any other platform mm -hmm. out there but at the very least steam uh has it like uh actually i think their sale just ended so you actually just missed I was gonna say, to get yeah. one and two cheap uh, you could have gotten which real I, cheap which i did i did not have one and two uh oh. in, at all um so it's like you know i think it was like 20 bucks or something like that for you know buying in a combo for the, their sales like yeah. done <laughs> it was phenomenal by the way like the the Mortal Empires for that one is mm -hmm. really, really fun. Nice. Like, three is going to get there. Like, they're already oh, this, yeah, they're uh, ramping this, up to it, right? Yeah, this beta, it's in beta. That's uh, true, the Immortal yeah. Empires. Technically, it's beta, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's in pretty solid shape. There's obviously there's a lot of balancing that needs to be done yet. And, you know, Warhammer 2 really benef had that benefit because they, they worked on it for years. So if you ever do want to try to give it a peek, like mm -hmm. you'll en you'll enjoy it. If you hit any like issues with three, and you're like, God damn it, and you want to wait for it to cook a little more, right. uh, Mortal Empires and two, I, I still play. But yeah, I I've been enjoying uh, Immortal Empires. I've been playing as a uh, Kithe, um, and the the nice. air dra the air dragon queen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, interesting. It's an interesting mechanic doing the the yin and yang balance and and balancing the the harmony for the building types and the unit types is very interesting yeah like yeah i think that you know obviously they carry that over into three and yeah it's like you know it, i found it the same way you know like each i'd say the more complex faction so they're they're definitely one of them where yeah. It's like, yeah you gotta you know do the balance um corn is is another interesting one where it's like basically you want to raise every single city you go through you're not you know you're not conquering and occupying Oh like wow! With the other ones, uh, oh that's good, interesting. Because basically, you want the skulls. It's skull for the skull god. Oh, that. skull for the skull god. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, you know, from. more or less, you're just you're just you know the the gameplay is is just like pave a path and don't stop. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's an interesting mechanic. I might have to give them a try. 
Yeah, huh. it, it's it's a little bit to get wrap your head around because, like, again, if you've been playing any of the other factions, it's always like, okay, get to a zone, conquer it, you know, try and occupy in yep. some fashion, and obviously, you know, bring down uh, the uh, what is it, the um, it's like basically like unrest or or whatever or whatever. Yeah, the, yeah, the control called control. That's what it is. Yeah. So he's like, you're bringing that down so you can, you know, everybody's happy and, you know, no one's do, starting a riot or anything. But no, you're just like flattening it. He's like scorched earth. Oh, wow. I think that try. That sounds fun. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. No, it's, I'm really happy with that. I mean, just the sheer, like you said, the sheer scale of it is breathtaking. Oh, yeah. Um, like, like, I think the map that they originally three launched with is about the quarter of the size, I believe. Uh, no, no sounds right. The, don't quote me on that, but it's, yeah, it, like, but it, and it utilizes that map. That map is yep. in there, and then it's, like, expanding, like, this huge, massive world. And it's just, you know, absolutely massive. So, you know, definitely worth checking out. Obviously, it's free. Um, you don't have to have one and two, just one and two unlocked factions. I would highly recommend it you know to be available and also same you know and again like if you bought the dlc all that you know will f- filter up into three which mm-hmm. I, I think is a great thing they uh, did the so. same they did the same thing with two like oh did they? Uh, okay yeah so like all the warhammer one stuff that you bought carried mm. over um so again it's a good one to check out if you hit any major bugs during this beta and get frustrated like i would say jump immediately into two because like there is a lot in in mortal empires that i want to see in immortal empires and i'm sure it's coming Mm. um there's a lot of like quests for the factions throughout the gameplay in the second one where it's like um uh, what was the one like the dwarves like you go to this one region to fight uh manfred von karstein and you can get this really badass sword for your leader like if you win so it's really neat it does all kinds of stuff like that for all the factions it's just brimming with content so i'm really hoping they bring some of that kind of thing into immortal empires which i'm sure they will it's just going to take time but uh yeah very very solid I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with that nice yeah but uh wow and now we <laughs> talking games in general <laughs> they're really stacking it man like for the rest of this year we've got Got a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff coming. Yeah, so Gamescom uh, was two weeks ago, one, one and a half, yeah. something like that. Um, so the, 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 you know, basically Gamescom kind of locks in more or less what we're going to see for the rest of the year, or at least, you know, through Q4, and then obviously setting up most for, yeah, for the most part. I mean, again, even like the Summer Games Fest, it was just like a lot of what's happening next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it's like it's still not, uh, you know... It, in pre-pandemic <laughs> years, like this, this is definitely still very much a light year of like what's coming this year versus you know what's on the horizon. Yeah. Plus, you know, obviously mounting delays and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, for the remainder of this year, uh, you know, we're we actually got a few. There, there was like one or two surprises. Uh, the new tales from the borderlands. Uh, so this is the telltale style oh. storytelling. And uh, but it's not by Telltale this time. Like it, it, oh, interesting. Telltale did do the the first Tales of the Borderlands, uh, uh, and this second one is made by Gearbox themselves. I think I think what happens, you know, obviously there's the whole Telltale. You know, we we looked at you know, we were we were actually watching uh, the the show live on stream and kind of doing a breakdown of things, and that came up. It's like it's like remember Telltale had closed their their doors, but then yeah. suddenly they're back and they're making you know and the, you know this is another one for next year the um uh, uh the expanse uh, Telltale uh, telling the story of Drummer. Oh wow! I think I think prior to the show is is what they're kind of setting it up as. So again, that's a great thing to look for. But but that is made by Telltale. And we're like, wait a minute! It's like we like did a double take. It's like what is going on? Because you know the new Tales from the Border is not by them, and they but they mentioned like, oh, we have a few devs from you know Telltale. So what happened was Telltale shuttered. They went bankrupt. Uh, a new entity bought them up, kept the name, and then kind of restored them, so to speak. Sort of, yeah, right. And so, the, the, you know, so they're still the one, you know, they're still, you know, quote unquote, telltale, but, you know, uh, you know, uh, how much is still around? Who knows? Um, but, you know, it looks like they're still keeping, you know, kind of like the same kind of, you know, uh, I say point and click adventure style mm. that you, you've come to know them for. Uh, cool. So that's what that's what we're getting with the Expanse. And then, you know, basically, you know, it's best we could surmise is like when they shuttered and you know, laid off all their people. 
uh, Gearbox, you know, uh, probably snagged a lot of those devs and like, oh, we want to continue our, you know, Tales from the Borderlands. Yeah, uh, I, I franchise. enjoyed yeah, that. It's part, of, it's part of the Borderlands franchise as a whole. Yeah, we're gonna take you. We're gonna we're gonna do it in house because you know they can and yes. do it that way. So I, I think that that's how you know that's how that story arc you know you know as best we could surmise and put the pieces together. Interesting. I'm eager to see how that ends up. Like, yeah, especially yeah, especially for both. Obviously, you know, big fan of Borderlands, and that oh, was yeah. a surprise. It's coming out October 21st. Uh, so, oh, um, I didn't realize it was coming out so soon. Yeah, yeah. So that that was the other like they kept that you know pretty tight lipped as far as I could tell. Like, it, it, oh like, yeah, I don't think anyone it. saw that coming. Yeah, it was like, oh, they announced it's like, oh, okay, that's something to look forward to next year. It's like, no, this year. It's like, oh, snap. <laughs> nice. And it's like, yeah. Uh, we got Return to Monkey Island. So all the you know Monkey Island crew is coming back. Oh, yeah, in, I can't wait. In September 19th, so end of the Ron month. Ron Gilbert and yep. Dave Grossman. Yeah. The Dastly Duo. Yeah, it's like next the week. The old crew. Yeah. Uh, or uh, two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. So yeah, but, uh, talk like a pirate day. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm pumped. It's yeah. going to be great. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Um, we got Callisto Protocol from the devs who made Dead Space, so yeah. it's, it's got that very you know Dead Space feel to it. It looks fantastic. That's coming out in December. I feel like it's a missed opportunity for for missing October, but I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. gu- I'm guessing it was like a stealth delay because they something. I don't, I, I don't think they ever said they had to delay, but it's like I was always curious. Like, okay, they're making a spooky game, but they're releasing in December. It's like, yeah, hmm. Mm. I, I, feel, I, feel, <laughs> I feel like it was like an internal delay, but they so obviously miss maybe. But they didn't release a date, so they they could afford to like oh. This is the date we're releasing. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. Looking forward <laughs> to that. Um, we got um what else? Uh I, I think those are the oh, those are the big ones. Out, oh, Outlast Trials, which is apparently you know the Outlast series, but it's oh. gonna be co-op uh, this time, apparently. I've never uh, really played the Outlast games, they look neat. Uh, they they're very atmospheric, very scary until you realize at least, at least with Outlast One, and I'm pretty sure Outlast Two did the same thing. Where it's like a you know, it, it's the whole like cross the wire, and suddenly the boogeyman jumps out of the out of the closet type of thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> so okay. so once you know where the trip wire is, then I feel like it takes some of the the scariness out of it. But it's very much you know, very much a horror game. So it's not high on my list compared to like Callisto Protocol. Yeah, no, I'm I'm pumped for Callista. That's like, yeah, that looks great. Exactly. Um, yeah. we got uh, a couple more by some known uh, dev houses. So Moonbreaker looks interesting. This is from the people who made Sub- uh, Subnautica. Oh, um, and again, kind of really genre bending here a little bit. Uh, oh, it looks but, cool. But it's a. I want to say, I, like, basically, I always I always revert back to like it's a CCG. It's not a card game though. It is a miniatures game. Yep. That plays kind of like uh, think of it like a card game. So like um, you know, and they they even mentioned themselves like uh, like magic uh, Hearth- or- magic Hearthstone you know style where it's like you're gonna collect these figurines and they all have different powers and you form a crew. So like a deck essentially. Yeah. Um, but it you know like I said the miniatures part. So th- this is like the really interesting part about it is like you will literally be able to paint these in game like down to like dope. the smallest detail it's not just like oh slap you know layer one red you know type of thing. it's like no they said like you're gonna be able to you know get in there and kind of like do t- do tweaks to paints and whatnot that's and, awesome man that, and uh, it's, yeah, a, it's like be able to pull off yeah and it's a brandon sanderson ip i'm a big big fan of his writing yeah, that was the other thing. It's like it's like I like at first I didn't know who the guy was. It's like who is this guy? And they're going oh, he's like, awesome. And he he finished up the Wheel of Time series. Like oh, he's the guy. <laughs> yep. And uh, he he has a amazing series of fantasy novels mm. that are all these different series, but they're all loosely interconnected into this thing he calls the Cosmere. And it's like uh, like his one series, Mistborn, is kind of like an industrial. Uh, revolution age world uh, mm. and where they like ingest metal to gain powers. Wow. Oh, it's wild. Mistborn. I highly recommend reading. Uh, then there's this, like his super epic fantasy called the um, stormlight archive. Mm-hmm. And that takes place in a more fantasy world, but it's all part of this universe. And there's like certain characters that are kind of like world hoppers that make appearances as different people. You can kind of figure out it's them eventually like the way they talk or the way they act and they like subtly influence like whatever this big picture is like if you really want to get 
Like in some really awesome epic fantasy writing, he is your guy. He's the one like, too. Okay. Oh yeah, he write. He's an incredibly good writer, and he cr- he is like he's no George R R Martin. He cranks <laughs> this son of a bitch cranks out like three four books a year. Like he mm. is a monster. Nice. And they're all like fucking six hundred page monstrosities. Wow. Yeah, they're really, really good. Highly recommend anything he writes. So yeah, I'm super pumped for Moonbreaker just because he's behind on it. Like behind it, you know it's going to be good. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and again, like just it, it's a unique concept. I you know uh, now I was talking on stream and, and like my only concern and like they did not talk about it at all and and really no one ever talks about this at all in their presentation. So you know it's you know not not outside the norm, but this is ripe territory for microtransactions. microtransactions. Exactly. Now, now, mm-hmm. albeit they they did say it was free. To, I, I think they did say it was free to play. I understand. You know, you got to oh. make your money, but it's like how how deep and how bad is this rabbit hole? Because it is. Do it you is... want black paint? <laughs> exactly. You That's what just... we were saying. It's, it's like, are we gonna have to buy paint? Like, you know, I I feel like no. The way he was kind of very, you know, the, at least the dev during the interview is very excited about it. Like, I don't think that's the case, but. It could be like, oh, okay, here's like a chrome or a, you know, uh, some kind of like metallic sheen or, you know, some, some, you know, super special looking paint uh, could, could, you know, again, this is all speculation. They, I don't know if they have a cash shop, what the deal is, but it's like that, uh, or we got to buy like, yeah. you know, packs, you mm-hmm. know, you're going to the CC, you know, breaking it down to the CCG aspect of it. It's like, are we going to have to buy, you know, blown yeah. packs or we got to buy units themselves? Um It'll make did, or break it. That's for sure. Yeah. Now they did say there there is a campaign that will allow okay. you to unlock unlock things. It sounded like they're going to set up things like seasons and whatnot. So you, it's like it, it's lining up to be your standard. Like okay, you're, you know maybe it's battle like pass. Like, battle pass. Like they didn't mention that, but it's like okay, you, you can you can see the writing on the wall type of yeah. thing. So, but it's like. I really want this thing to work, but at the same time, oh, like, too. please don't bend me over a barrel. <laughs> please don't be Blizzard. Please don't be Blizzard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah well, well, oh, man. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I, Blizzard apparently, uh, re- I guess, recently changed how they did Hearthstone, I guess. Um, oh, no. And that, that yeah, that that's going over like a lead balloon. Um, but yeah, but yeah, it's like, I'm eager to see how it is. Uh, yeah. They are doing early access in, in sometime in September. I think it's, they said the end of September, I believe it is. Yeah. So, at the very least, if I don't get in, I'll, you know, chances are there's going to be streams or something. So I think it's something to very much check out and see. Yeah, I got to see if Coe's going to get in on that. Yeah. Wh- what is the deal? Because <laughs> color me interested. Like, you know, oh, I, yeah. I, you know, I love the aspect that you're going to be able to, you know, paint these miniatures, make it very unique, your own. Um, I'm down for a good CCG. Again, as long as it's not a case of like, okay, you know, to really be, com- you know, I say competitive, but, you know, it's like they will have player versus player you sure. know, option. And obviously they have a campaign, so you don't have to do that. But it's like ultimately like something like this is like you're going to want to pit yourself against a player. And, yeah. and, you know, again, not to, you know, like I don't want to get into the, you know, the, the, the try hard competitive. I want to be the, you know, the casual, you know, have fun competitive aspect. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's like, I don't want to have to, you know, it's like, okay, am I going to buy, you know, buy, yeah, I'm gonna it's like, spend money it, hand over fist. To yeah, have if, that it, fun. if it's that, it's like, nope, I'm out. I'm done. You know, it's like, I'm not, I'm not even going to, you know, I've been yeah. down that road before. God, not me for too. me. <laughs> oh my God. Me too. Uh, uh, magic, yeah. magic online. The, 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 oh, the original. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> God, I spent way too much money on that. I don't even want to talk about it back in the day. <laughs> $500 one paycheck just pissed away oh, in an man. hour. Oh, anyway, <laughs> um, Splatoon three also hits next week. I'm actually yes, really nice. pumped for that. My kids love that game. Well, they love the Splatoon series and, uh, they've been really, really good just with the back to school stuff. So I'm surprising them with that, with that next Friday nice. and uh, I'll probably gonna pick it up myself just because like, I have my, my little switch light that just never sees action, especially now <laughs> that I got a steam deck, like that thing is collecting <laughs> serious dust, but, uh, it'll be fun to play that with my kids for sure. And um I'm trying to think of what else anything else that really stood out to me. Oh, killer clowns. I cannot fucking believe they're making a killer clowns <laughs> yeah. for outer space game. My boy, my boy Adam at work, he sends me this link and I'm like, are you for fucking real? <laughs> like that's nuts. That and Liza P. I saw that and I was 
hysterical. I was like, I want this game so oh, bad. Yeah, no, yeah. Now obviously, we're talking about you know, these are confirmed for twenty, or I say, I say confirmed, but you know, these are on the twenty three list. Uh, but yeah, yeah, the, the killer clowns thing. I did, was not expecting that because I think no. the, the prelude was like, you know, you know, we love taking you know franchises from movies and, and making it a game or whatever. And at first, I thought like it started with like this eighties vibe, and like it's not like a Stranger Things, is it? Yeah. And and it goes through and it's like killer clowns, like and and like it was one of those like you know latent memories just popped into my head like oh, oh my yeah. god i remember that <laughs> yeah and i was like is this some sort of joke <laughs> now obviously uh, no gameplay we don't know what it is now apparently it, it's a um 3v i think they said 3v4 oh interesting uh, so, so unlike, you know, the one V four, uh, uh, I forget the, uh, it's not isometric, but the, um, yeah, the, the term for, you know, you know, one versus multiple type of thing, but yeah, I forget the name of it, but it, now it's three V four. So three killer clowns versus four, I think players, it, maybe they said seven. I don't know. That could be um, interesting. Yeah. It, it, like, okay. i uh, color me interested. You know, it would, yeah. And that was, that was definitely another thing of, of watching, uh, Gamescom this year is like about half to maybe three quarters. I mean, it's like three quarters. It felt like more. We're all trailers. Yeah. Very little gameplay. Very which, little gameplay. Which <laughs> I, I you know it's always been a thing throughout you know the years. But I feel like there's a, there's a like maybe you know it's probably been growing, but it feels like definitely this year there was you know it seemed a less tolerance for like okay. Don't mind a nice flashy trailer. It gives us a sense of yeah. you know, the setting of the game, but ultimately, it's like well, you, you need to see some gameplay. Yeah, you need to show some gameplay, and you know, especially if it's coming out, you know, like next year. If it, if it's something like a title card, like you know, coming, we're, we're making it, you know, type of thing. It's like okay, you don't have a date. It's somewhere out that and, you know it's going to be you know <laughs> vaporware for a bit. That's fine, but yeah. A lot of these, like, yeah, just no gameplay whatsoever. And they didn't even have, like, follow-up gameplay, or at least, you know, weren't able to show it, you know, in, yeah. in the follow-up streams that I saw. Um, but, yeah, like, yeah, Liza P. Uh, so getting back to this, yeah, Liza P., that looked, that looked crazy fantastic. That it, looked that, fucking bonkers. Kind of a Dark Souls, Elden Ring style, but it's a twisted tale of Pinocchio. Um, so it's like, color me interested. That oh, looked yeah. really cool. Um we we saw a couple of other things. So uh, Funcom is making a Dune. Uh, that over, I'm over very over. interested in. Yeah, very interested in. Yeah, it's like you know, you know obviously they they they're famous for having Conan uh, Exiles. I think it is. Um, so, but uh, they, I don't think they mentioned. Well, uh, they may have some. I think I saw Survival somewhere, but it's like MMO. Oh. So it's like, what kind of an MMO are we talking here? Because I feel like MMO is another one of these terms that have been thrown a lot. Oh yeah, it's days. it's been fairly abused, I think. Yeah, yeah. it's like, um, and, 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 and you know, and I, I think you're probably on the same page as me. Like when we when we hear the term MMO, it takes me back to like you know EverQuest days, yes. Star Wars Galaxies, where you have like yep. a ton of people running around. Your early That's World an of MMO. Warcraft, like, yeah, yeah, it's like you know, yeah, I'd say like I feel like the limit is like Guild Wars Two is still an MMO because you have areas where you can you can still interact with a lot of people. At least oh yeah, in the no, I, I would absolutely consider Guild Wars Two an MMO. Holy shit! Yeah, going yeah. through the main city today, I, I ran into a bunch of people. Yeah, exactly. Um, Whereas you know, there are other games that tout MMO, but honestly, but it's like it, those sixty-four player servers, yeah, like Conan Exiles. Like yeah. that's not a fucking MMO. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or it's like you know, the, you know, uh, I, I bring up the warships. Arc. Uh, arc yeah arc is you know arc is, is where it's just it's so heavily instanced it's like yes you yeah. can play with a lot of people but it's but you're really you're you're in a pocket of like you know five to yeah. ten or whatever it's like yeah to that me that's to me not is, an mmo yeah, that is not an mmo like instantly is you know it's like mmo is like instantly means like at some point there's got to be a, a ton of people on the screen at some point so you know, it's like yeah, i have no, it's I have no problem with instancing but it's like yeah just don't call it an MMO. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you can do instancing, like instance dungeons in an MMO are yeah, very handy. Exactly. Like, and, and that's what that's what Guild Wars 2 does. Like you have yeah. your cities and your open areas, but then when you get to the dungeons, it's like, okay, it's like okay, it truncates down to you know yep. your, your party you and your group. Size. And that's yeah, fine. That's fine. But uh I, yeah, if they're gonna do a Dune MMO, yeah, I wanna see that. And I wanna see Yeah. Because there's a lot of things you can do with the Dune, you know, property. There's like the political intrigue, the economic factor. If they do it right, um, I I would like to see. I would like to see it be an actual MMO. You know, if it's not going to be, mm. then 
I'll, I'll still check it out, but like yeah, to your it's, point, but it's like don't throw the MMO title around like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, I'm really getting tired of that getting just tossed around. Like, oh, because you can play with other people. It's an MMO. Like, that's, that's just no. called multiplayer, right? <laughs> Let's no. not kid ourselves. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else. Oh, Lords of the Fallen Two. I did see that. That mm. looks very the, interesting. Yeah, but again, another trailer, but you know, it kind of had this, you know. Uh, yeah, Elder, you know, the Dark Souls, Elden Ring style feel to it. Yeah, um, the first one was similar. First one's actually a decent oh, game. I think. Oh, it's a sequel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I think I think Lords of the Fallen is still on Game Pass. Oh. Um, I have to double check. Actually, I'm going to check that now, because if, if you haven't played it, it's actually worth a peek. It was pretty fun. Um, it, Tough. It's tough, but... uh. Yeah, no. Okay, no, there's nothing yet. All right. Um, let me see. Hogwarts Legacy. It, oh, no, it says it says the Lord the Lords of the Fallen. It's not two. It's just oh. the Lords of the Fallen. So either this is some un- something unique and new, or huh. like was the first one called Lords of the Fallen? Yes. Oh, maybe this is a remaster or like an Xbox. Let me, all right, the Lords of the Fallen 2022. What is this? The Lords of the Fallen. Oh, okay, wait a minute. The sequel to Souls like Lords of the Fallen. Okay, no, it is the sequel. Why? The sequel is now called The Lords of the Fallen. Why the fuck would you do that? Well, okay, so, so there is another one. <laughs> yeah, Lords of the Fallen is the first one. The Lords of the, the Lords. Fallen is the sequel. <laughs> what? what fucking marketing idiot thought that up? Oh my god. God, that is just the dumbest fucking thing I've ever. Sorry, that just really bugs me. <laughs> that really bugs me. Anyway, yeah, I, I could. Well, which one do you mean? Are you talking about the Lords of the Fallen or the Lords of the Fallen? <laughs> the, like we're getting down to the alien versus aliens. <laughs> like who's on first here? God damn it! Oh god, these fucking people. But uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. This Tortuga Pirate's Tale. I just checked out the epic page for it. This is another one I get nervous. What I want is basically a 2022 version of Sid Meier's Pirates. That that's kind of the vibe I got. You know, it's very low key. It's definitely not like you know. There's like zero details. Yeah, yeah, zero details. Very very board game esque. It had like hex grids and all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, I didn't see a video. I'll check it out. Yeah, um, huh. like they they had a little bit of gameplay, but it's definitely like it looked more like indie dev style. Hmm. Um, it, it, but it was like it was like, oh, this looks interesting. I'd, I'd kind of like to see a little more of how it plays. Uh, you know, not, I'm not expecting like you know, Sea of Thieves or or you know, uh, um, Skull and Bones, you know, you know, style. Like, well, by the way, Skull and Bones sounds like it's going to be a giant shit pile. Oh man, like everything I keep hearing about it, it's just like it's like it's like. It's like Ooh, boy, this this is gonna be this is gonna be an interesting launch. They <laughs> took out boarding. Yes, yeah. Like, it's, what it's just cutscene now. The fuck. Like, well, and there's se- there's interest... several aspects of of uh, uh, Black Flag that they took out. Uh, that it's like, and that's all they had to do. Take Black Flag think... multiplayer. Yeah, that's all you got. That's all they had to do. That's all I had, to, but no, it's like, oh, let's take off everything you know, that was fun. <laughs> it's like boarding, nope, head. out. It's a cutscene now. Uh, t- going to an island, nope, take that out. You're you're now just like cutting down trees for your boat that you got to roll up next to the island with. It's, it's fucking like, burning sea all over again. Oh man, it, it's like, oh man, it's it, it's uh, it's gonna be interesting. <sighs> now, now, if if it's if it survives launch somehow and is continued to be supported, it could become something later, and that's what I'm thinking is its best hope right now. Because yeah, like its launch, you know, everything I'm seeing about like what's gonna what we're gonna get at launch is just gonna be like garbage, you know. Uh, I, sadly, uh, my interest in that game pretty much plummeted the second I read it. That I read that I was just like, yeah. Like, uh, like, yeah, I'm not dropping sixty dollars, let alone ninety. It's like ninety. I think it's like a ninety for a collect. Like, no, this this is this is looking like a forty dollar game, at best, at best, at best. Yeah. And it's like so. It's it's like, you know, I'm 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 not you know 
It's definitely not a pre-order. It's definitely not. I'm not picking it up like week one. Like nothing is lining up to like, oh yeah. Like the uh, the idea is like back when it was like, you know, first announced like, oh yeah, sure. It sounded great. But yeah, everything we're seeing now, mm -mm, mm -mm, hold on to your money. Like I, I'd say just wait it out, see what happens. You know, because because again, the problem is it's Ubisoft. It was If it was anyone other than Ubisoft, like it might be a baby. Yeah. But right now it's, it's, it's just looking like, oh no. Like, I'm, I'm save, at hard pass on it right now. Yeah. I'm at save hard your money. pass. We got, we got plenty of other stuff happening. <laughs> it's like, okay. you're going to get, you're going to be entertained. Yeah. And I just looked at this one. You have, what the fuck is everywhere? I'm seeing Roblox for grownups. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, nobody knows what this is. Like, like, even even um during the present it was the very first thing on the Gamescom uh 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 opening night which yeah. uh, Jeff Jeff Keeley did it was the very first thing and it was the weirdest thing and he even called out you know it was like afterwards like there's a shift in art styles it goes from like this very like yeah uh you know I'll, you know I'll boil it down to a very cartoony looking thing not you know like you know it's like oh it's bad cartoony and it's like no it's like no like Overwatch yeah 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 exactly <laughs> it's like Overwatch or uh, Apex Legends or you know kind of had that look and then at the very end it switched to hyper realistic so it's like your Star Citizen slash Callisto Protocol looking thing. And it's like, what is going on? And like the guy came on and, you know, and it was like, oh, maybe he'll kind of explain things, you know, the dev or whoever he was. And he started throwing out these buzzwords of buzzwords of like, oh, it's like you're gonna be able to do anything you want with your, with your friends. Like I have heard this before. Right? Oh, have heard have this you heard plenty. of Peter Molyneux before? <laughs> <laughs> you, did you Are study you at the us? school of Peter Molyneux? <laughs> Are you Molynewing us? Because I want to be Molyneux. <laughs> I have been here before. It's like don't be throwing buzzwords of you can do anything. It's like uh uh, and it's like uh -uh. And like describe nothing of what the gameplay was. It's like what is this thing? Yeah. I We'll see. They got some heat, I saw, but they clarified, and I'm I'm feeling a little better. Uh, people noticed that they had three open positions at their company for blockchain developers. Oh no! And people jumped on that and to the point where they actually went on record and clarified that no, they're building this on Unreal Five, not the blockchain. Uh, those are strictly research positions. <laughs> Quote, uh, I'm doing air quotes here. You can't see them. Air quotes. Yeah. Research. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling they're trying to find a way. <sighs> if this is if this is Roblox for grownups, not necessarily NFTs, but finding a way. Like, if this is going to be a game driven by content creators, like making sure that that content creator owns mm, that content that they sure, create. Sure. You know what I mean? And and ripping it off would be. Maybe some way of stopping that. So I can, at least for now, buy the research angle behind it. If this is going to be the kind of game that's, like, driven by content creators and child sweatshops like Roblox. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fucking weird, weird oh, world, man. man. Yeah. I, I, I got into a YouTube uh, uh, rabbit hole oh, of, no. of this guy, this, this uh, website that has been following and investigating Roblox for like a couple of years and that is some fucked up shit like these quote unquote developers that get these kids to make content for them and like the one guy was like grooming a 13 year old it's all kind of what fucked up the hell? Yeah, it was like the more I read I was just like man I want like I'm very very careful like my girls like any other kid you know they, they seem to love uh, playing Roblox, which okay, um, but we're very like we watch very closely. Like they can't mm, chat with anybody. Good. Like we have everything yeah. shut off, good. and they mean. You still there? If you're still there, I don't hear you through Discord. And I'm still green. How's it going, Craig? You doing good? You got some new features? Look at all these new features. And there he goes. <laughs> well, this is the part, Craig, where Beagle gets to fill in. <laughs> Oop, hit <hitting> the microphone. <laughs> Put that thing back where it came from. Put that thing back where it came from. How's it going, chat? Yeah, sorry. I always oh, refer to the audience's chat. I mean, it's a streamer thing, right? 
Uh, but yeah, uh, like I, I'd, be, I'd be curious. Uh, hit us up on uh, Twitter or something. Like, is there a game that you were looking forward to? Something that jumped out from Gamescom, or you know, even outside of Gamescom, just you know, game you're looking forward to. And he's back. Hey, there he is. All right, I'm done. I'm done filling in. <laughs> yeah, it's like whack ass memory leak. Uh, I don't know if it was Discord or what. Yeah, you just, you just cut crazy. out and bloop, there you went. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. Craig's still going, too. He's still going. I was, I was entertaining nope. Craig, you know. Very good. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well, that's that. Let me. Uh... Sounds like we're having a child meltdown. Oh, boy. Let me see where we left off. I think we pretty uh, much covered. Yeah, I, I think we covered most of, most of the stuff on the horizon that's, you know, piqued our attention. Uh oh, Homeworld three. Wait, I thought uh, or no, Homeworld three is, is that's right. They said the first half of twenty three. Homeworld three. Yeah, drops. looking forward to that. The um, first half. I don't follow like campaign like, or something. No, no, like like January oh, through the year. Through July. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It basically, seems you know, Starfield, Homeworld three, mm-hmm. and I think there's another space. It's like we're getting all our space games in the first half of twenty twenty three. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm all for it. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> Nice. But yeah, I mean, that pretty much covers all the stuff that's coming out. Um, and that, oh, and the, the main bit of news that dropped today, I think, uh, the Activision Blizzard deal ah, looks like yeah. uh, with, with Microsoft is finalizing. And uh, yeah, I saw the big announcement, like all the COD games are coming to Game Pass. That's uh, yeah, so they're coming to Game Pass. So, you know, are we going to see other things? You know, it's like your Warcraft subscription going to be able to go through game pass or is it going to be separate? That would be very interesting. That would, Ooh, man. Could you imagine the amount of customers that would pull in for game pass? Oh man. Holy it's like shit. Microsoft, the true mothership. <laughs> that that's a, that's a huge, huge thing for them. If they pull that off, man. Oh yeah. Oof. yeah. Wow. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. But um, yeah, shit. I think other than that, that's pretty much covered the releases, covered the news, and uh, I think that will get us towards the end of our episode here. Yeah. Wow. The comeback yeah. episode. Yes, and thankfully, as long as nobody up and dies on me or, you know, ends up in a hospital, uh, I'm planning to get back to regular recording. <laughs> so it should <laughs> definitely be easier with the girls in school now, and sure. I'll actually, you know, be able to upload this tomorrow since I'm not at work. And uh, it would be good to get back into the swing of things, man. It was good to talk to you. Oh, yeah. It was great great to finally sit down again. Hell, yeah, man. I missed it. I definitely, like, after sitting down to do it, it's like, yeah, I need to do this. This is, like, my outlet, my social <laughs> outlet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so if you want to hang out with us, uh, go on to the Save Point, our, our Facebook group. Uh, we're usually talking games there. Right now, it's where we have a conversation going about the Steam Deck. Uh, Luke asking if it's worth the grab, and everybody that has one going, yes, <laughs> it. do it, uh, do it now. <laughs> um, if you want to call and leave a voicemail, you can call us at 610-810-1654. Leave a voicemail. Tell us what you think, or tell us what you're excited for, or what game has currently got you hypnotized. Uh, other than that, we'll just do some shout outs. Obviously, thank you for everybody that has come back to listen after such a long hiatus. Um, like I said, I'm really trying to get back into regular recording now that things are starting to settle on the home front. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And thank you all for the time that, you know, you're giving us and hanging out with us today. Um, thank you to our, you know, just the shows that we, we listen to. I, I enjoy Married to the Games. Just such a nice group of dudes over there. They're very friendly and they've always been very cool when, you know, I reached out and chatted to them. Um, other than that, again, shout out to everybody here. Uh, I hope y'all had a great summer, and uh, we will now be f- going into the fall gaming season and looking forward to uh, all the good stuff that is coming out soon. Mm-hmm. Other than that, if you want to hang out with us on Twitter, you can uh, hit us up at the Retro Rents. I'm at Retro Rents Al. Nick is at Black Eagle Ops. You can email us theretrorents at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to check Nick out on Twitch at Black Eagle Ops. I'm still flirting with the idea of streaming. I will be doing Extra Life again this year. I did sign up. Uh, so, Nick, we'll have to get a Phasmophobia crew going. Oh, yeah. I've been thinking about that quite a lot. That was so much fun. <laughs> and uh, we'll have to get on that again. And other than that, uh, everybody, until next time, 
have fun, play games, and don't be dicks. Peace. Oh, look, I can just hit a button for a crack now. Oh.